When humans first opened their eyes in the morning, struggling to see something, blurring was discovered. But they didn't actually have any way of saving that effect until cameras were invented. And thanks to long exposure times, weird old lenses, and manual focusing, they managed to capture blurry images that sometimes showed motion and movement and other times depth of field, like how close or far objects were to the camera. But nowadays, thanks to digital lenses and computers, we have more types of blurs. Like zoom blur draws attention to a certain part of an image. Directional blur shows motion and movement in graphic design. Tilt shift blur emphasizes on a part of an image and creates a shallow depth of field. Smart blur and surface blur get rid of noise and imperfections in yourself Lens blur simulates depth of field and creates a cool bokeh effect that everyone used for sensational coats in 2013. Box blur creates a soft blur over an image. And finally, Gaussian blur creates a smooth and natural blur, which is actually the most common type of blur you see on your favorite websites. But wait, box blur and Gaussian blur look kind of similar though. Yes, except they don't when you look closer. No, I mean way closer, like in the way they're coded. Imagine you want to make this little blue square blurry. Your computer would imagine the square in the center of a checkerboard and start averaging out the colors. So it makes eight black cells and one blue cell and divide it by nine. And you'll get a darker shade of blue all across these nine cells. This is a box blur, which is not smooth enough. So this time the computer distributes the blue a little bit more on the central cell and its neighboring cells, and a little bit less on the farther ones. Now this this is a Gaussian blur. But where does this smooth, beautiful blur come from? Gaussian blur is one of the use cases of the Gaussian distribution or normal distribution created by Carl Friedrich Gauss to explain real-world phenomena where the distribution of data shows a higher concentration in the center than the two far ends. This formula helped us so much and not just in math or data science, but also in internet memes, getting rid of noise in images, edge detection, and of course, web design. For example, you can apply a simple dimple blur to any layer for any amount you want. 5 pixels, 20 pixels, 100 pixels, or even more. You can make a little blob in Figma, export it to SVG, animate the colors in the code, and give it a cool little blur and put it on the corner of your website. Aw, isn't that pretty? But don't get too excited, because this is just blurring level 1. And you get 9 more to go. Level 2, background blur. Background or backdrop blurs are kind of similar to layer blurs, but instead of blurring this blob, you put a weird frosted glass in front of it. This works the same way as a layer blur. It receives a number and makes whatever that comes behind it blurrier and blurrier. You can see this everywhere nowadays, on your phone, your computer, it's literally the age of glass morphism. There are many ways to use this effect, like putting shiny objects behind it. But I think where it really shines is using it as a background instead of a solid color. Level 3, Gradient Blurs. A head over the background blur like this is cool and all, but this cut right here is pretty uninspiring. A head over the background blur that fades away toward the content will fix that. This is basically a linear gradient that goes from blur to no blur. But gradients are for colors, so we need a simple gradient that goes from very low to zero opacity. But this transparent area is still blurry. So to make sure it's actually transparent, we'll turn this gradient into a mask that mixes with the background. But this is not just for headers. You could also try making things fade behind newer content as you scroll down on a website. Level 4, Shadows. Think of a shadow as a blurry object right behind the main object. Sometimes this blurry object is the exact same as the main one. Sometimes bigger or smaller. Maybe it's even a different color. Or maybe it's inside your object. Shadows are used in web design mostly as, well, shadows. But sometimes they glow. In these cases, you can bring in an actual blurry object and position it absolutely on one side and make this cool glowy glassy effect. Or they might add some depth and realism to your design. For example, two opposite inner shadows can make a button feel 3D. With shadows, you either go realistic or chaotic. Level 5. Clip path. The most insane thing about blurring is that it's like a fandom. No one really sees it, but it's there. An effect like this is either a border gradient or a background gradient that's clipped near the border, right? But how about now? We talked about how similar Gaussian blur is to gradients. So this could actually be a super blurry rectangle and we could cut off the interior. So let's grab a pizza cutter and make a path on the rectangle that starts at position 0, 0. This means 0 from left and 0 from top. Then we'll go to 100% from left, 0 from top. Then 100% left, 100% top. Then 0% left and 100% from top. And finally, we'll go back to 0, 0 again. So what did we just do? Well, basically nothing. Except we made a polygon that happens to look exactly like our rectangle. And now we can continue to cut off the interior from this polygon. Let's say we want to border this thick around our rectangle. So we grab the pizza cutter again, and we'll go to 5 pixels from left and 5 from top. Then we'll need to go here, which is 5 pixels from top and how far from the left? 95%? 
95 pixels? Well, we wouldn't know unless this is a rectangle that has a specific width like 100 pixels, but we want it to be dynamic. So we'll need to calculate 5 pixels less than 100% of this rectangle's width. Based on this logic, we can cut off 5 pixels inside the top right corner, bottom right corner, and just continue this until the central part is completely detached from the polygon. Now if you put any element inside this card, the border glows dynamically. This is just one of the ways you can make cool visual effects with clip path and blurring. Level 6 SVGs. CSS sure can get a lot done, but if you want a little more control over the effect to make crazier things, you can make SVG filter with good old HTML. There are a lot of filter elements that can apply cool effects like graininess, but FE Gaussian Blur is the one we need for blurring. Just like before, we need a number for the blur amount. Remember this checkerboard? When you increase the blur amount, you're basically expanding the blur radius, aka standard deviation. Good news is this is absolutely reusable thanks to this filter ID. So now we can apply it to anything like this image. And this makes us pretty powerful. And you know what comes with power? You guess it, creativity. For example, right now, absolutely nothing stops us from creating a cool revealing effect for a hero section on a website like this. You make two images, blur one of them, and put a mask on the other one. The mask is a simple circle with a fixed radius that cuts out the rest of the image. But those edges are way too sharp. So let's ease it down with the blur filter. Now you can use a little JavaScript and an animation library called GSAP to constantly calculate where the mouse is horizontally and vertically from the left and top edges of the browser window. And you just move the circle to that position. And if you want it to be a little more dramatic, you can add a duration to it. Now you can get creative with this, like, ooh, click to reveal the next level. Level 7, shaders. Deep down the rabbit hole of HTML tags, there is a canvas tag that opens the door to web graphics library, the realm of trippy distorted art that mixes with web design. The shader code goes right into your JavaScript where you tell the vertices and fragments of your canvas how to behave. If the canvas has an image, then the vertices are pretty obvious. But now, imagine this image is filled with these small checkerboards aka kernels. If you want to blur the image, you need to figure out which pixels on this kernel are more important than the others, which is basically what the Gaussian formula does. We can turn this formula into code and write a bunch more code to calculate the blur. But of course, I don't expect you to write all that, because that would be a whole other video. Plus, in this day and age, we have the luxury of copying and pasting well-written optimized code that's been working for years. There are even tools and libraries that do it for you. Besides, doing all of this for a simple blur, bit of an overkill, isn't it? Well, of course, Course, but only until level 8, shader effects. The coolest thing about shaders is that now you have control over every pixel of your canvas. So the limit of what you can do is your imagination. Remember the selective focus effect we made with SVG? You can turn that into a smoother version thanks to shaders. This effect is pretty common, especially on award-winning websites. But this is not to tell you that you necessarily need shaders for a stunning blurry website. Let's go to level 9, animation. The real art is using blurs to convey meaning or create a lovely experience for your visitors. Blurring has a few simple concepts for being playful with your website, like hiding and revealing content, or focusing only on one part of the content or transitioning between sections. For example, if I have a bunch of text like this, instead of putting it in front of your face and knowing full well you're not gonna read it, I'm gonna blur out the words and as soon as the top of the words container hits the top of the page, they start unblurring one by one as you scroll. Now you can read it better. Even though this is nowhere near the beginning, level 10 is not about some quantum technology. The real challenge here is mixing it all together in a harmonical way or adding other effects to it, like adding noise to your blurry blob or using it alongside other CSS properties, like adding contrast to a blurry text to make it look gooey, or using blurring as an image loading animation like on this website. The possibilities are infinite. But be careful. Even though blurring is simple, not all browsers feel the same way about it, especially not the older ones. So for CSS, it wouldn't hurt adding a WebKit prefix for WebKit browsers like Safari. Plus, if you're planning to use shaders, you're gonna have to optimize the shit out of it, because it directly uses your visitor's GPU to render, and you never know what GPU they have. I mean, not everyone has a monster like mine. Well, that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you do your magic down there, and see you on the next one.